Hello, grade six students. Welcome to a new science lecture video. In this video, you will learn the two other basic phases of the sexual reproduction in flowering plants. First, as you all know, plants are living organisms, so they are made out of cells. And to be more specific, plants are made out of plant cells. And scientists classified cells into two types, plant cells and animal cells. Here is a drawing showing a plant cell with its different components or parts. A is the cell membrane of the cell. B is the cell wall. C is the vacuum. And D is the chloroplast the cell membrane to let things in and out the cell, the cell wall to make the cell tough and rigid, C to store food and water, D to catch sunlight energy needed by the plant. E is the cytoplasm, F is the mitochondria, and G is the nucleus. The cytoplasm is a gel-like structure that holds all organelles in the cell. F it is the powerhouse of the cell. It provides the cell with the energy it needs to perform different activities. G is the boss. This is the control center of the cell. Animal cells show almost the same organelles or parts except for the cell wall and the chloroplasts. So you will see a nucleus, cytoplasm, vacuoles, cell membrane, and mitochondria. These cells, plant cells and animal cells, can build different types of living things. You can find microorganisms, organisms that are too small, and that are made out of a small number of cells. These organisms are microorganisms, and this means that they cannot be seen by naked eyes, but by a microscope. And you will see multicellular organisms like us, for example. You, teacher, you, you are a multicellular organism made of an endless, a huge number of cells. Plants and flowering plants are, are multicellular organisms too. Flowering plants and non-flowering plants are made out of plant cells. Let's give some examples of those two categories of plants. Spruce trees, mosses, ferns, and pine trees are examples of non-flowering plants. These plants do not make flowers at all. While orange trees, cacti, cucumber plants, and dandelions are examples of flowering plants. And you know how important is the flower for the plant. The flower was with all of its parts, the petals, for example, the, the anthers, and the stigma have all a job in the plant's reproduction. So this is um, a picture showing the face of a flower, the orange petals, the yellow anthers, and in the middle, you can see the stigma of the pistils. Let's label this flower. One, the purple parts. These are the... These are the petals of the flowers. The leaf-like structures, two, these are the sepals. Number three, other than the petals and the sepals, you will see the anther of the stamen, the filament of the stamen. What about five? What's five? The stigma, yes. Six is the style. Seven is the ovary. And inside the ovary, there are 
ovules. All of these parts are involved. Each part has a job and a role in the plant's reproduction in the process of making babies in the plants. Let's start with the petals. The group of petals is called the corolla. The corolla is super important. The corolla has beautiful smells, have, has beautiful colors to attract pollinators, to attract animals. Pollinators like wind, like bees, like butterflies, like bats. What about the sepals? The group of sepals is called the calyx. The calyx protects the bud. It protects the flower as it grows. Then we have the pistil or the carpel, which is the female reproductive organ in a flower. The pistil is the female, it is the girl. It has three different parts, the stigma, Look at the arrows, guys. We have the stigma, which is the head of the girl. Then you have this line, this tie. And right here, you can see the ovary and the ovules are inside. Then you have the anthers. You have the stamens. I'm not sure if you can see them. I'll change the color. So this is the anther. This is another anther. And we have the filament holding the anthers. An anther with a filament make a stamen, which is the male reproductive part. Let me remind you what happens or what should happen for the reproductive to be done in a plant. You have this anther. The anther right here produces or makes pollen. It makes pollen. So pollen is one. Then you have in the ovary, the ovules. Ovules are two. Ovules and pollen must meet each other. So these two much meet, should meet. The pollen will be taken to the stigma and then the sperms released by the pollen grains will be taken to the ovules. Once the sperm meets an ovule or combines with an ovule, you will have a seed in the ovary of the flower. I'll talk in details about the different steps of reproduction in flowering plants. What should happen for an egg or an ovule to combine with a sperm? So you will need to put an egg next to a sperm, a girl sex cell, a female sex cell with a male sex cell. The first phase is pollination for sure, pollination. The second one, fertilization. The third one, fructification. Let's start by pollination, which is the easiest one. Pollen must be taken from the anther to the stigma. So this is the anther. The pollen must be taken from the anther to the stigma. This is pollination. Transferring pollen from the anther to the stigma. Then the pollen grain, here it is. The pollen grain sticks on the stigma. And then it feeds on the sweet substance found on the stigma. It presents, it shows a pollen tube in which it produces or releases sperm cells. When a sperm combines with an ovule, you will have a seed. This combination is called fertilization. So in this phase, in this step, the egg or the ovule is fertilized 
by a sperm. I will re-talk about fertilization. So the pollen grain sticks on the stigma. It feeds on the sweet things found on the stigma. Then it does two things. It makes the pollen tube, this is one, the pollen road for the sperm. Then it releases the sperm cells. When a sperm cell combines with an ovule, this is fertilization happening. At the end, okay, so I have here a diagram explaining in details fertilization. <laughs> pollen landing on the stigma, then pollen tube growing and entering the ovary. Then sperms fertilize ovules. We'll see it one more time. The pollen is taken to the stigma. A pollen grain presents pollen tube and releases sperms into the ovary. The sperms fertilize the ovules. The last part now, which is fructification, easy to define. This is for plants that grow fruits. After fertilization, all the parts of the flower will fall down. The calyx, the corella, the stamens, everything falls down except for the ovary. The ovary will turn into a fruit. And here I'm talking about plants that grow fruits only. Okay, pollination, fertilization, fructification are the three steps of sexual reproduction in plants. Are all flowers similar to each other? Let's take a look. Flowering plants reproduce sexually. You will see a pollination, a fertilization, fructification, but you will see different kinds of flowers. Look at the first flower. In this flower, you can see this, the, what is it? It is the pistil. Here is the pistil standing in the middle with its stigma style and ovary. And as you can see, how many stamens are there? So you have one, two, three, four, five, and six. The stamens and the pistils are shown in the same flower. So this is a perfect flower. It is perfect. It shows both uh, parts, both organs, the female and the male. Look at the second part. In this flower, there is a pistil. Is there any stamen? No. So the pistil is present. The stamen is absent in here. This is an imperfect flower. What about the second one? The second one shows two stamens. The stamen is here, but there is no pistil. So this is also another imperfect flower. The cucumber plant, the pumpkin plant, the date trees, the scratch plant are all examples of plants that grow imperfect flowers. That's all for today. I will use this slide to revise what I talked about. A set or a group of petals is called the corolla. The corolla attracts pollinators by its beautiful colors and beautiful smell. The set or the group of sepals is called the calyx. The calyx protects the bud of a flower. The female reproductive organ is the, is the carpel with three parts, stigma style ovary. The male reproductive part is the stamen with two parts, anther and filament. The, uh, <clears throat> Sexual reproduction in plants happens in three steps. Pollination, fertilization, and fructification. What's pollination? It is transporting or transferring pollen grains from the male anther to the female stigma. Fertilization is the combination, is combining a male sex cell, which is the sperm. So the sperm is the male sex cell, while the ovule is the female sex cell.
So when these two combine, we call the process fertilization. The last process is fructification. Fructification is turning, is the ovary turning into a fruit. Um, last thing to say, you know now why uh, we say that flowering plants reproduce sexually, it's because you need two types of sex cells. You need a mom and a dad. You will take the female sex cell from the, from the mom and you will take the male sex cell from the uh, dad. So sexual reproduction involves the participation of two parents. A dad, a male, and a female. I hope everything is clear for you now. If you still have any questions, I'm waiting for you in class. We can discuss everything. Um, see you. Take care. Bye-bye.